Okay, here, here's the whole story. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad Alex walked outside. Um, here's the whole story. We're at the WPT in Paris. And we're playing a cash game. At least four and 800, maybe a little bigger. I can't remember. And even though Phil and I were best friends, we play props. And in those days, I was kind of higher on the totem pole than Phil. Phil one time even followed me around a tournament playing props, sitting behind me. They let him sit behind me. And I even sometimes, he would do funny things in props. Like he'd turn his cards over quicker. We'd have some board crap. I used to let him take advantage of me, uh, which he probably knows. And like, like I say, what, since when he got to the top, he's been very nice to me in certain situations, help me out, whatever it is. Um, but Phil and I were playing props, maybe a third person. I can't remember if there was a third person in the game. Now we hear just screaming in French, really, really just loud screaming. And we see a guy with a gun to the back of a security guard marching into the cage in the aviation club. And everyone like dives to the floor. Well, everyone except me. I sit in my chair calmly. Now, I, I actually have had a couple times guns pointed at me. The first time it was pretty scary. Didn't grow up in a gun culture. But it was so obvious he's going to the cashier's cage, and we just had chips on the table, not money. I never for a second thought, although occasionally he didn't have an accomplice with him. Sometimes when they have multiple people, they come and rob the people of their jewelry, which I've seen happen. But mm -hmm. it's just one guy. I knew he's not going to come and shoot us, whatever. I didn't in any way feel threatened. But everyone else is under the table. I'm just sitting in my chair like this. And then Alex says, get under the table. And I said, the guy's not... He's at the cage. He's not going to do anything else. And then you, you got to, you know, like tears. You got to get under the table. So I wasn't afraid. I mean, actually, it's a mistake in retrospect. This is before you see all these shootings. You know, you don't want to be a randomly shot person. He could have walked out. Who knows? Been crazy guy and shot me. Right. It was the wrong decision on my part. But at the time, maybe trying to be macho, whatever. I don't know. Whatever, I, I just maybe in the mindset, I don't get under the table for anyone. But I didn't until she basically dragged me under so now we're under the table and Phil says to me, and I don't know what you know about props, but if you hit a prop, the very next hand, if you hit again, it's double. We call that being on for doubles. And props for those people who don't know, we have three card combinations. We each used to have like six. And if those three cards, it all started from when people used to bet on 100 to one on three face cards coming on the prop. Then we modified it where you could pick your own. My main prop is nine, seven, three. Mm -hmm. Phil's big prop is eight, five, four. And then we have other props that aren't worth as much. Okay. And each of our name props actually have our name and Phil's or I'm trying to think what chips was because we even had a thing when chip died, we retired his prop. <laughs> okay. Nobody else could take it. What was chip? And, and people were known Do Doyle's not surprising is 10, three deuce, the 10 deuce being from the hands he won. And he throws the three because the three card props. So we all had name props. Um, but anyway, we're under the table, and Phil is actually the one, says to me, hey, when this is over, you know I'm on for doubles. And through the commotion and everything, I didn't remember. I said, you sure? And I assumed, you know, whatever. You know, I, Paris? Yeah, Paris. He said that, but it's the opposite. Well, wait, no, you're not supposed to tell that ruin the story. She just walked back in. Anyway, so Phil says, we're on for double. I, I, I'm on for doubles. And I said, are you sure? He says, yeah, I'm sure. You know, I remember it. I glared at him. And then, oh, Alex <laughs> says she glared at him because she didn't think, she's sitting behind me. She didn't think he was. No, I know exactly what happened, but the guy pointed a gun at me, remember? The guy pointed the gun at you? Yeah, in the club. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't think it was pointed at you. But anyway, she says. It in my face. Okay, she says it was pointed at her directly. That's why she was scared. But anyway, and I said to Phil, okay, I, I didn't remember, but, you know, if you say you're on for doubles, you're on for doubles. Uh, okay, you know, when we get back to playing, so now we sit up to the table, and then we get to see the board. We didn't, re I didn't realize, none of us did. The board hadn't been taken down. The guy came with the gun, the board is still sitting there. And was I on for doubles? Yeah, Alex said, yeah, I was on for doubles. <laughs> he but was, when he said he was cracking up. Oh, he was taking a shot. No, but, he was laughing at you when he oh, said Oh, he was it. laughing. He, he was, 
he was giggling. When oh, he she says he was giggling. You. He was doing it just in a lighthearted way. He probably didn't know one way or the other, but lighthearted, he said, hey, when we get back, I'm on for doubles. Mm -hmm. Not so, like a mean shot, but kind of joking shot. But then we get back up to the table, and there's my problem. I'm on for doubles. So that's, <laughs> that's what actually had. We were So maybe anyone else not knowing what's going on. I think Jeff Lissandra was there at the time. Who else? David Benjamin, probably. David Benjamin. Um... People like that. So they've heard us. They're all worried about getting shot. And we're talking about props. That's actually what was happening. I stood up to go to the bathroom. The guy pointed a gun at me and told me to sit back down. Oh, that's what happened. Oh, <gasps> she had to go to the bathroom after a while. And the guy pointed a gun at her and told her to sit so, down. I was the first one. I, I got up to leave the room. And then I was like, kind of shocked. As soon as I turned around, the guy stuck a gun in my face. Okay. And I just slowly turned back around, slid got my chair and actually I was the first one to just automatically slit under the table. <laughs> okay. Oh, she wasn't at the table when the guy first came in. That's why you mean when the guy came in the gun, you weren't behind me. You were like out towards the hallway. Right? I was behind you, but our table was right at the door. Okay. Okay. Mm. I don't know if you can hear that. You were right I at the hear. door. Okay. Okay. So whatever. That's what happened. And uh, whatever. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she's <laughs> she's been mad. She's not been happy with the way I acted that time. Because I told him to get under the table and he wouldn't. Yeah. Until yeah. the gunman told him to. No, the gunman didn't tell me. I went. On, I got under because you told me. No, the gunman okay. told okay. everybody to get on the floor. Oh, okay. Okay. We didn't get our stuff stolen, which reminds me of another story. They used to charge so much rake in these private games in Texas. Uh huh. Actually, I get two stories on it. Houston. Okay. Uh, one, I'll tell the one, because I always remember this one, I'll tell the one I may forget. I used to play at a place called the Redmond's Club. And the way it worked at the Redmond's Club is people don't realize you could operate a poker room. There was a guard tower, a regular card room they played. I don't think they're there anymore. But as long as you gave money to charity, you had a charter, you gave money to charity, maybe give kickbacks to the police, they'd let you run it. And most people didn't know that. So there's a red man's club. And the reason that I first started buying in short was the rake at the red man's club. You probably, like a lot of states, you can't rake the game. That's illegal. But like you can have a home game if you don't rake it. Well, they charged a fee. And the fee at the red man's club was for some reason 10% of whatever you bought in for. The game, this is 1979, probably is that... I'm trying to guess. Yeah, probably was 25, between 25 and 30. Mm -hmm. Probably around 1979. Um, it was a $500 buying game. Might not sound like a lot, but you know, people usually buying for 2,000, 5,000 was a big buying. Uh, and people buying for two or 3,000, and I'd see they're buying for 2,000. You'd have to pay $200, right? And I just said, well, can I buy them for 500? I mean, I had the 2,000, but they said, yeah. And when you bought them for 500, they took $50. So to me, okay, try to run up the 500. And if I went broke, buy in a 500 again, pay another 50. That's how it worked. Every time you bought in, you had to pay 10%. So you can see it made perfect sense to buy in short, right? Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I started buying in short. Then I started to see some benefits, like people not knowing how to play against short stacks, not having bad losses. So I didn't like start out buying in short. I kind of learned that, hey, I can make a lot of money not doubling someone up who would quit the game and chop it. There were all sorts of weird benefits that I ended up finding out. But the real reason was, I don't know if you're going to call me cheap, I didn't want to pay as much in uh, the rake. You know, I wanted to pay the minimum. That's how it started. But anyway, um, there were private games in Houston. They raked ridiculously, nothing like this. And this is, in, again, in the 1970s, 1980s, $1,000 an hour, which even now would be a lot in rake. And the games weren't as big. They were just hand and fist. And you know, like, like you complain, and I remember saying, why are you raking? And they'd say, well, if anything happens, the police come, I'm the one who takes the heat, I'll be bailing you out, and all these kind of things. Then they did lend money, a lot of times they said, well, we're, we're lending the money, we're responsible for everything. They give you all these reasons. Well, one time, it was actually an inside job, it was a game on the Gulf of Mexico, and these guys, it was a guy who had dealt the game. They came over in boats, the the the... <laughs> The place where the game was was right on the Gulf. It was like a lot, you know, the house right on the Gulf. Mm -hmm. These guys took boats, came in the back way because there were guards with guns out in the front. And they they busted in and they said, okay, everyone strip. 
They made everyone strip. They took money in their pockets and take off your jewelry, watches, Rolexes, whatever people have. Took all the jewelry, had a big bag, took all the stuff. And then they went to this one guy, the people in Houston will know, the old timers in Houston will know who I'm talking about. I can't remember his name anymore. Uh, my friend Larry Parker was the one who used to invite me out there. And that's how I learned probably to get better at Hold'em than I did in Illinois. I was a road player. It's good to go to different games, learn how different people play. It was a good education to learn how to play No Limit Hold'em. No Limit Hold'em. Anyway, this guy used to always brag. He had a five diamond, a five carat diamond ring. He'd always flash it when people have a ring. Someone would ring their wife. He'd always say, well, I've got a five carat diamond ring. Bigger than everyone else's, right? <laughs> These guys come and they say, uh, give us your ring. And he says, man, I've worn this ring for 13 years. It doesn't come off. And I won't forget, the guy says, well, we can get it off. And the guy takes a gun. And he points it at this guy's finger. Mm. And the guy says, I've tried. It doesn't come off. And the guy says, well, I'll get it off. And he says, no, no. And the guy's almost in tears. The guy's about to blow his finger off. And then he says, well, wait a second. Let me go get some soap. Let me try to get it off. So here's this guy with a gun going to shoot his finger off. And he goes to the sink and he puts some soap on and he does this thing. It comes off. And everyone actually, even though it was a horrible situation, starts laughing because he had been bragging about this ring and even telling people it's never come off in 13 years. He's got the biggest diamond ring of everyone. And then people, even in the heat of battle, even this is going up, people say, Larry, I thought that ring never came off. You know, you gained some weight over the years. I think his name's like, I may have the name wrong. It's probably some other name. I probably have his name wrong, whatever his name is. Uh, and uh, and he swore, it's now, I've tried to get it off. It's never come off. But that time it came off. And then what the game went back to normal when this robbery takes place or what happens? The guy, was oh, of course, nobody got reimbursed for their jewelry. The guy's always saying, Hey, if anything happens, I got you covered. You know, the police come this, that. Well, now everyone said, okay, we got our jewelry stolen. We got our money taken. We've been paying thousand dollars an hour for years. You're covering, right? Uh, no, <laughs> there was no covering. So they leave. You guys are all, all naked sitting there. Laughing at the guy that loses his ring, the well, money's not gone. Laughing, but people lost their money, and you know, no, we're not laughing. We're everyone. Well, everyone's relieved that no one got killed. Right. You see a guy with guns. You know, you do think, hey, you could get killed. And again, in a casino, not very likely to happen. My whole thing about porno is the here's how it looks to me: is me watching other people have sex. I'm very lucky, and I will credit some of it to having money in my life, whatever, that I, my sex life has been good my whole life. I've never wanted to see other people have sex. I just, it just doesn't do anything for me. I'm not, I'm not even downplaying it, but normally I think people who watch porno, it's because their sex life isn't that. My sex life, I think, is better than whatever I'm going to see, or it has been. Maybe not now, but I'm saying it has been. <laughs> Alex is laughing at this. Alex is laughing hysterically. Okay, now it is too. I'm sorry. He's laughing hysterically. I, I didn't mean it that way. No, well, here's actually how I mean it. Another 